Hey everyone, uh, welcome to finding the absolute max or minimum using the close interval method. This is Nicholas JMV. So the two examples I have for you today are from Patrick JMT. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and get started with an example to actually figure out what does it mean by close interval test. And it's really similar when we find absolute maxes and mins with critical values. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first example. So uh, we're going to find the absolute max and min of this function. Okay, 3x squared minus 12x plus 5 on the closed interval, that's what it means, from 0 to 3. So the first thing I want to do is find the derivative. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and find that and I get 6x minus 12. Okay, and so from here we know that we want the critical numbers. We've got to find any turning points. Okay, so we're going to set our derivative equal to zero. We can factor out a six here and we get this. So look, our x is going to be equal to two. And so what the closed interval method says, I got to test this point, this endpoint, and this endpoint to see which gives me the max or min value. So I'm going to look at f of zero first. Okay, and I plug 0 into my function, so it's going to knock out the first term, it's going to knock out the second term, and I'm left with just 5 here. Okay, now f of 2, this was my critical value, okay, and now I'm going to plug in 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 5, okay, and it looks like I get, so, uh, 4, uh, 12, 12 minus 24, negative 24 plus 5 is negative 7. And then I look at f of 3. So when I plug in f of 3, 3 times 3 cubed, same pro or 3 squared, excuse me, minus 12 times 3 plus 5, and that is going to give me negative 4. So if we look at this, remember this is an endpoint. That's the endpoint. That's the endpoint. Okay. So we can tell the largest value is 0. So we could say here that 0 is our absolute max. Okay. When x is 0. When x is 3, we get our absolute minimum. Okay, and that's what it means to use the closed interval test on a function. So let's go ahead and look at one more example. Let's look at f of x equals x over x squared plus 1 on the interval, again, from 0 to 3. So you can do this a couple ways, okay? And I guess one of the ways I do it, I just, I'm going to evaluate f of 0 first. 0 over anything is 0. Okay, so I get 0 for this. And then when I plug in 3, I get 3 over uh, 3 squared plus 1, so 3 tenths. So I've got my endpoint values. Now I need my critical numbers, and we'll see which ones I get here. So I take the derivative, which is going to be a quotient rule. So I take bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. Okay, this simplifies to being 1 minus x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. Now you might be scared off by the fraction, do not worry. We're going to set this equal to 0. We want the critical numbers. The only way to make a fraction 0 is make the numerator 0. So you have 1 minus x squared equaling 0. So that means x equals plus or minus 1. We have two choices here. However, back at the beginning, our interval is from 0 to 3. So x equaling negative 1 is out. So I had f of 0 being 0. Now I had f of 3 being 3 tenths. Now I'm going to go in the middle here, and let's check our critical value at f of 2, or excuse me, f of 1. So I wrote that in a different color. So we go back up to the original, and we have 1 over 1 squared plus 1, so that's just going to be 1 half. Okay, so here's our absolute max, and here's our absolute minimum. When x equals 0, the absolute min is 0. 0, 0 is the minimum. The maximum happens at 1 and 1 half. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments about how to find the absolute max or min 
uh, using the closed interval method. You can type them below, and we'll see you next time.